Thanks for breaking it up, Ben. All right, go on, now. On your way. About your business. Go on, all of you. Clem, what's going on here? What's happening? This town's being split down the middle. That's what's happening. The man's and them clerks won't stop until they kill each other. I'm glad you're in town. The judge wants to see you. Huh? Come in. Well, Judge, how's his honor the judge? Fine, thank you, Ben. How are things up at the Ponderosa? Well, not too bad, not too bad. I've been wanting to get in touch with you. Yeah, uh, Clem said something about you wanted to talk to me about the silly feud between the maids and the clerks. <laughs> oh, now, wait a minute, Ben. It's not so silly. Huh? It's gotten to the point where everybody in town's caught between them. And what's more important, it's reached a state of potential violence where innocent people can get hurt. Well, Clem, you've got all the authority you need to handle uh, the situation. <laughs> When the mans and the clerks start knocking each other around, there isn't a thing I can do. One of them comes in with a busted nose, and I say, what happened? He said, I fell off the barn. <laughs> With Sheriff Coffey out of town, they don't listen so good to a deputy. Oh, come on now. You, uh, you're not going to let them get away with that so easily, are you? Can't you arrest them for uh, disorderly conduct or uh, fine them for disturbing the peace? There are all kinds of things you can do. We can go on making small official acts that won't really stop the trouble. Or we can allow the violence to erupt into killings on both sides and then punish the offenders. But best of all, we can try, with the aid of men of goodwill, to prevent murder before it can happen. Now, Ben, the judge here has appointed a committee of townspeople to uh, tackle the problem, to go and talk to the mans and the clerks. Good idea. You are elected spokesman, unanimous. Me? And why would people think that I'm so deserving of such a dubious honor? Because you're impartial, Ben. Because both the mans and the clerks respect you. I can't accept this this kind of responsibility. I. And you're not going to flatter me into taking it on by using words like uh, impartial and respect and, and words like... Uh, besides, I'm too busy. I got a ranch. I got a ranch to run. All right. If that's the way you feel about it, I guess there's no law can make you do it. Well, I guess there is no law can make me do it. <laughs> Shot of that whiskey, and he found out it was pure vinegar. It like brought the whole bar down. <laughs> you know, I've been hearing about this feud between the mans and the clerks for months now, but I still don't know how it got started. Well, it, uh, it started when the young Jim Clark up and married Carolyn Mann, and they had twins. That started the feud? Well, not until they uh, up and took the twins and moved east. Hey, well, I still don't understand. Well, the reason they moved east was. Uh, 
Each family was so jealous of the twins that Jim and Carolyn were caught right in the middle, so they just up and left. And both families kept blaming each other for running them off, right? Well, with that for a start, they've been fighting over every other thing they can think of ever since. Is it necessary for you boys to continue this conversation about the Mayans and the Clark? Is it absolutely necessary? Gee, you know, the other day I was, uh, down by Salt Creek, see how that new dam was holding up, and, uh, well, that stream down there is nothing but a mud bank now, and, you know, it took me five minutes to get my horse to cross it. But he's a smart horse. He, uh, once he realized the barn was on the other side, uh, he just finally made up his mind that he had to go through with it, so he stepped right in, went right across without a slip. I spent a small fortune educating my oldest son, and he entertains me with old-fashioned homilies. Uh, now, I guess you're right, though, Adam. I suppose I'll have to step in, whether I want to or not. You were so all fired anxious to get me into this thing, right? I figure you should each have a chance to try to help. How are we going to help without guns? You get over there to man's and get in trouble. Now, look, if you're trying to be a peacemaker in the feud, you can't go around carrying a gun, can you? Well, what are your plans? You figuring on influencing them with words? No, no, but uh, selling Sunday's Palm Sunday. Well, I thought it'd be kind of nice if we had a, a welcome party for the new minister. Well, everybody bring some food, and we'd have a real get acquainted party. You mean with the Mayans and the Clarks both there? Well, of course. That's just the point, don't you see? I figure they're not going to be doing any fighting right there in front of the church. And that'll give the new minister a chance to get to work on them right away. Yeah. I'll bet he'll appreciate your efforts, too, Paul. <laughs> sure, let's go. May we come in? Of course. Pleasure to see you. Thank you. And you too, huh? <laughs> Thank you, Miss Well, sit down. Just baked a fresh pie, and I can fetch coffee in the middle. Oh, well, that's wonderful. Right. That fresh pie really smells good. Horse, you gonna sample that? Oh, dang, I reckon I am. Mm -hmm. It looks good. Come around? No, he's out on the range checking fences. Uh, a little trouble in town yesterday, and we never know what them clocks may be up to. Yeah. This uh, trouble between you and the Clarks has been going on quite a while now. It's going on for quite a while longer. Caroline was the only child Tom and I had, and the Clarks drove her and her babies away. Oh, well, now, do you think that this quarrel is going to make the loss any the less painful? Then, if someone drove your sons away, would you think of them with kindness, treat them with love? Now, Winifred, I... I don't think the Clarks drove your daughter away. Look, Miss Mann, how much good do you reckon all this fighting and arguing is doing Carol? Why, you're on the Clark's side. Oh, ma'am, we ain't on nobody's side. Of course we're not on anybody's side. We just thought maybe we could talk a little about well, it. I have nothing to talk about then. Well, uh, anyway, what uh, really came about, uh, you know, the new minister is going to be here next Sunday, Palm Sunday. Yes, I know. We're looking forward to meeting him. Yeah, we've missed going to church ever since we lost old Pastor Miller. Yeah, that was a real loss. Well, we, uh, we all thought it might be real nice if, uh, if we could have a nice welcome for the new minister. Everybody bring some food, we could have a real good get-together right after the services. Oh, that's a fine idea, Ben. 
I'll bring something really nice. Well, good. I knew we could count on you, Winifred. Thank you. Uh, Hoss, I guess we better be getting along. Got a lot of other people to invite. Yeah. Thank you, Winifred. Just leave that good pie. Ben. Me. <laughs> yeah. Are you inviting the Clarks? Well, uh, of course. They're members of the church, too. All right. But just make sure at the party that the food is kept separate. We couldn't eat Clark food. I'm sorry. We would choke on it. Later. I should be hanging out with my own kids' wash instead of my brothers and sisters. Why, uh, Peggy, a girl as pretty as you must have a lot of young men buzzing around. Well, the trouble is, the nicest ones all seem to be related to, uh, you know who. Oh, uh, your mom Paul around? Well, Paul's out on the ranch somewhere, and Mom went to town for supplies. Oh. Well, I'll tell you why we came by. You know, next Sunday, Palm Sunday. Well, that's when the new minister arrives. We thought it'd be kind of nice if we had a welcome party for him after the sermon. You know, everybody brings some food and we have a good old get-together. Well, that's a wonderful idea, Mr. Cartwright. I'd be glad to tell him. Good. Uh, is everybody coming? Yeah, yeah, everybody's going to be there. Even the man's. Shh, don't use that name around here. Stampede's a stock. <laughs> Well, I'm sure glad somebody around here's got a sense of humor about this silly feud. Well, don't judge the clocks by me, Mr. Cartwright. Believe me, no one else takes it lightly. Must be pretty tough on you being caught in the middle of a feud like this. Well, it's worse than that, little Joe. Never knowing when one of your family is going to kill or, or be killed. I sure hope that new minister can do something about it. Yeah. Yeah, I sure hope he can. Well, Peggy, uh, you give uh, you folks her regards and the message, and uh, we'll see you next Sunday. I'll be there. It's the only time I get to see any of those good-looking men, then. <laughs> Bye. See you Sunday, Peggy. Bye. Hello, Ben. And you had us worried. We thought you were going to be late. Well, as a matter of fact, uh, Hop Singh is away in a visit. It took the boys and me a little longer to prepare the food without his help. Well, if you hurry up and get here, the more I smell that food, the more hollow I feel. <laughs> hollow? Have you been dipping into those beans and pork all the way in from the ranch? Well, I'm afraid our beans and pork are going to look kind of puny up against all those fancy dishes. I'm getting kind of hungry. <laughs> I think I'm a little too nervous to eat. Oh, here come the man's. Well, Ben, where do you want us to put the food and some of the finest milk produced in the territory? <laughs> <laughs> well, that's mighty nice of you, Tom. Do we all appreciate your generosity? Tom wanted you and the boys uh, take your gun belts off him. Oh, 
Well, we don't hardly go anywhere without them these days. None of us is wearing a gun, of course, except Clem here. I can see that. But you don't expect us to ride these roads unarmed, do you? Why, we could be pushed by the Clarks from any tree or rock. We don't need no rock to shoot at the Mayans when we want to. Come. Come now. Just, uh... John? John, this is Palm Sunday. Palm Sunday. Just keep things peaceful. There ain't no Sunday peaceful with the Mayans around. Any guns, John, do you understand? Not one. Take off your gun belts. Put them over there. I don't trust the man. Make them drop theirs first. Ben, Clem, bring it out of the way. Listen to me, you two. You're just getting a little tired of all this ruckus and feuding and, and fussing and, 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 and all this violence. Now, now just Take off your gun belts or, or get out of here. No. Everyone is welcome here. That must be the new preacher. How'd he get there? This is your church, and I am its guardian. Atron has no place here. This is a house of love. And you will enter as friends and neighbors. He got in there without us seeing him. He sure handled everything. Yeah. Thank God. Gentlemen, you're at the right place to do just that. Disturbing me. I thought everybody had left. It's been quite a day, so I came in here and to gather my thoughts. Well, most everybody has gone home. But Mr. Cartwright said he'd give me a ride, so I I thought I'd wait and have a word with you. All right, Miss Peggy. What are your words? 
Maybe it'll sound silly, but I wanted to thank you. To most of us young people, a year seems like an awful long time. To us, it seems like this terrible feud's been going on forever. I understand. I sometimes suffer from impatience myself. Though it never helps to solve the problem. Oh, there you are, Peggy. You're all ready to go now. Oh, Reverend, I'll, I'll say goodbye again. Uh, well, I wasn't interrupting anything, was I? No. Of course not, Mr. Cartwright. I was just telling the Reverend how happy we are he's here. How grateful we are. Well, we, we certainly are grateful, Reverend. I, at the risk of repeating myself, I'd like to say again how inspiring the sermon was today. I, 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 I've never seen the congregation as quiet or as attentive as it was. It was real fine. You know, I, I never thought that I, I would see what happened today. To see the clocks and the mayhems join together in the hymn singing. <laughs> they joined together again pretty good a little later when they tackled all that food at the welcome party. <laughs> Didn't they? <laughs> Do you think that this could be the beginning of the end of the feud? Well... I mean, wouldn't it just be wonderful if it were all over? Yeah, it would be. But I think you're being overly optimistic. Well, maybe so, Reverend, but... Uh... As head of the committee in charge of trying to get the mans and the clocks to settle the differences, I can tell you, we're pretty happy you arrived. <laughs> You'd like to transfer your burden over to me? Well, uh, yeah, well, no, no, not exactly. I, I, but uh, you think that that responsibility is now mine? Is that it? Well, Reverend, I... Well, it seems to me that people are suffering some sort of moral illness and well, isn't that your calling to minister to such illnesses ministers are human beings too mr cartwright they're not all wise and all healing my capacity for healing this breach is probably no greater than yours well i i thought we all hope. We all hope that we can transfer our decisions and burdens to other people, even ministers. But there are some problems you can't give away. Hello, Ben. Judge. I was afraid you might have already gone home. Oh, no, we were... Was something wrong? Yes. I came to see you, Reverend. I have a problem. I thought perhaps you could help. Yes, whatever I can do. This concerns you too, Peggy. It's bad news, I'm afraid. I. I just received a wire from the authorities back east in Illinois about your brother and his wife. There's been an accident. An accident? What do you mean? Jim and... Jim and Carolyn. Not... dead. The wire said... I'm terribly sorry. Oh, no. And the twins? Well, they're all right. Reverend, I thought perhaps you could help break the news to the Mayans and the Clarks. No. No, I, I'll do it. I'll go home and... Oh, Lord. Oh. I'll go with you and then go over to the Mayans. Oh. I'll drop you both off. Babies. Those poor babies. I'll get my things. Miss Peggy. I wish I had the words 
to express my sympathy. Don't need words. I understand. Terrible tragedy for those poor families. Judge, you said the children were spared. What's going to happen to them? The wire covered that, too. This concerns you, Ben. Hmm? The authorities in Illinois said that their parents' last request was that the twins be placed in your custody until you could decide their future. Why would they request a thing like that? A very good friend of the family? Well, yes. Perhaps they remembered that you remained impartial during the quarrel between the two families. Uh, it's much too much of a responsibility. It was the parents' last request. Of course, you could ignore the arrival of the children, let the Clarks and the Mayans fight it out. No, I guess I, I couldn't do that. To make a decision is certainly going to take a wisdom far greater than mine. I'm ready. Judge, you're sure. Twins are coming out on this stage. You saw the wire yourself, Ben. Reverend, both families understand clearly. You explained everything very carefully. They were both very upset by the news, but I'm sure they understand. I don't want to be influenced one way or the other by the clocks or the mayhem. I'm afraid you have no choice. Look. Both gave me your word there wouldn't be any trouble. There isn't going to be any trouble. My wife here just wanted to see the kids, see that they're all right. They've been through a bad time. Oh, Tom, I know exactly how you and Winifred feel, but I want you to promise me that you won't upset the children once they arrive. How about them? John, I just got through talking to Tom and Winifred. In fact, Dad, I don't want the children disturbed once they arrive. You just came in to see the kids. Wanted to make sure that they're all right. Just make sure that's all you do. Here comes the stage. Don't forget what I said now. tie a horse behind your wagon and come along. You might need help. Well, thank you, Reverend. That's very kind of you. I think I might need some help. Come on, let's go.
nice ride? Yeah. Here we go. One down and two. Peggy, what are you doing here? I thought you might need some help with the twins. Peggy, the boys and I... I told the boys to go on about their jobs. You what? I think they were glad to escape. Peggy, you know I must remain impartial in this. I can't make it appear as if I'm playing favorites. I won't try to influence them, Mr. Cartwright, I promise. I, I just want to love them. I'll take them into the house. young lady is wise beyond her years. The children need a woman's love right now. I only hope I can make the right decision. With God's help, you will. Huh? A delegation like this must be uh, trouble, huh? That's just what it is. We've got to see your pie, Adam. Well, come in and make yourself comfortable. <clears throat> well, uh, have you got a new hobby, Adam? No, uh... <laughs> well, I'm getting to be a pretty good expert at dressing dolls. Uh, it's the second time Sue dropped it down the well. How are the children doing, Adam? Oh, pretty good. Uh, after that first day, after Peggy got them calmed down, and uh, after we uh, got Sue this doll and uh, Kenny an animal to play with, get, I'll get Pop. Oh, hi, man. What's up? Well, we came to see your pa, Hoss. Adam's gone to get him. Me and Joe are back there in the kitchen trying to whip up something to eat for the kids. You fellas join us? No, thanks. No, Hoss. Hey, 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 you can't go in there with that pig. Kenny? Now, look, how many times have I told you not to bring the piglets into the living room? Joe, can't you take care of those kids without me? Now, look, I can't cook, watch the kids, and keep the pigs out of the living room all at the same time. <laughs> well, go on outside. Don't bring that pig in here anymore. We, uh, we didn't have any puppies to give the kids, so we gave them piglets. Gentlemen, sorry to keep you waiting. I've been doing my paperwork upstairs. There are less distractions up there. Sit down, sir. Thank you, man. Go up. Adam tells me there's some sort of trouble. There sure is, Ben. I got word Tom Mayen's gathering his riders. He says you've had time enough to make up your mind. He won't wait any longer. Well, what's Tom Mayen going to do? Use guns to get the children? I don't know, but I think we ought to be prepared. Well, if Tom Mayen thinks he's going to shoot his way into the Ponderosa... Gentlemen, there's not going to be any shooting. That's no solution. Well, of course you're right, Mary. That's no solution to... It's up to you, Mr. Cartwright. You've got to make up your mind about the children. Well, I need more time, though. I, I... I'm afraid time has run out on you. In just a few days, it'll be Easter Sunday. 
Let us tell the mans and the clerks you'll announce your decision then. That's only a few days away. I... Mr. Cartwright, you must make a decision now for the children's sake. All right. Next Sunday, then. Easter. Fine. We'll tell both families. At least that way it'll delay any gunplay until then. I wish I could help. I wish you could help too, Reverend. It's a lonely job. Whichever is the easier. The right one goes on the right foot. Paul, that's the way you gave it. <laughs> oh, come on. <laughs> come on, I can you take uh, it easy and we'll get him. You're in charge of Kenny here. Oh, now get him into the buckboard as soon as you can. Now. Goodness, you look pretty. Now, here we go. Let's hurry now. We better get him out there and let me dress him on the way. We're going to be late. Come on. Come over here. We're going to need a rope. Now, may I escort you to the wagon? Yes. For my text this morning, I shall use portions from the Sermon on the Mount. They are words by which all of us can live. The most beautiful of all, I think, are these. Ye have heard that it hath been said, Thou shalt love thy neighbor and hate thine enemy. But I say unto you, Love your enemies. Bless them that curse you. Do good unto them that hate you. And then, judge not that ye be not judged. For with what judgment ye judge, ye will be judged.
and with what measure ye meet, it shall be measured to you again. It's right around here in the back. Can you find it? Yes. You need any help? No. Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. Blessed are they that mourn, for they shall be comforted. Blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called the children of God. Blessed are the children, for they shall be called the peacemakers. Before we sing our final hymn, I should like to announce that Ben Cartwright has selected today Easter Sunday, as a day for the custody hearing here at the church at 2 o'clock. The care and custody of Kenny and Susan Clark will be granted to the family who can best prove its fitness for the task of caring for these children. We shall now sing hymn number 137. <laughs> Wait for me to deliver the stable. Right. Oh, are you sure you want me standing back yet? No, no, I'll be all right. I just thought the twins out of sight for a while. Okay. Got right. It's up to you now. Yes, sir. Thank you for your help, Reverend, and for this, I... I guess it is up to me, but I don't feel quite so alone now. I have struggled many days with this problem, which concerns all of you. And I hope we can find a fair solution this afternoon. Uh, Mr. Clark and Mary, I ask you now, what can you offer these children should they be awarded to you? John, stand up. We have plenty to offer. You can tell them all about it. it doesn't seem quite right to me, Mary. Just to stand John, up here. I don't care if it's right or not. I want to 
was children. Well, I tell you one thing I can offer these children. I can offer them a home. You all know I'm a well-to-do man. Not rich, but I've got enough money to give these children all the things they want. Just like my own children. Each one of them can have a horse to ride, and good food to eat, and warm clothes to wear. That's what Mary and I can offer these children. Uh, John, I, I don't think you quite understood the meaning of my words. I, I did not mean what can you offer in the way of uh, money or clothes or those are material things. Now this morning, you all heard Reverend Jordan read to you from the Sermon on the Mount. You all bowed your heads. I heard you all answer, Amen, to those golden thoughts. So now I ask you, John Clark, and you, Mary Clark, will you love your enemies? If so, John, I ask you now to step across to Tom Mann here and offer your hand in friendship. You got no right to ask that, Ben Cartwright. Clark and Mary and I forgive the millions. How can I offer my hand to a family that reviles me? I won't do it. All right, John. Very well. It seems to me, then, that you have very little to offer. folks. Folks! Let's not have any disturbance in here. Come. Come, man. What do you and Winifred have to say? Tom, we have plenty to say. Just a minute. Tom, let me get up and say Ben, I think you know we're not rich. But we can match John Clark dollar for dollar. We'll do all the things for these youngsters we did for our own. For the one the Clarks drove away from us. And they did drive her away. You know that my daughter would still be alive if... Winifred, please, that is not the issue. We're here to decide which of you two families will have the custody of these children. And so I ask you, just as I asked John Clark, if you can provide for Kenneth and Sue the comfort and protection of a home where love of God is not just something that you hear about in church, but practice every day of your lives. Now, if you can, will you, Winifred, and you, Tom, step across to John and Mary and offer them the friendship of your hand. Ben, you're forgetting I once had a daughter. How can I offer my hand to the people who drove her away from me? Samuel, second Samuel. <laughs> oh, my Lord, I and this woman dwell in one house, and I was delivered of a child with her in the house. And it came to pass the third day. And when I rose in the morning, behold, the child was dead. And the king said, Bring me a sword. And they brought the sword before the king. And the king said, 
divide the living child in two. And to make my decision, I have called upon the wisdom of a man, a judge, who is far greater than I am. I've called upon the judgment of Solomon. Divide the living child in two, and give half to the one, and half to the other. These twins, Kenneth and Sue, will be divided in two. Kenneth will be given to the care of John and Mary Clark, Sue to the care of Winterfett and Tom Mann. Boss, will you take Kenny to Mrs. Clark? Joe, take Sue to Mrs. Mann. Ben, they're not going to stand for it. Reverend, do you think we were right? Wait. Let Kenny and Sue do our work for us. <laughs> Don't take me away from my sister. Oh, Kenny, darling, we're going to give you such a nice home. And I got just the horse for you <laughs> with, a, with a new saddle. And a new bridle. I don't want a horse. I want my sister. Please don't take me away from Kenny. He needs me. No, I can't. Just I love them and want them. These children have to stay together. She's yours. They're both yours. Be good to them. When it... Oh, darling. Oh, darling. Take these babies away from Tom and Winifred, who have none. Yes, maybe you're right, Mary. Well, let's go over here. been many years, so I wouldn't be very honest if I offered you my hand right now. But I hope after today it won't be too long. I hope it won't be either, Tom.
consider the peacemakers. Thank you, Ben. I'm afraid this peacemaker had the help of someone with far greater wisdom than mine. If it weren't for the Reverend here, yeah. I'm the Reverend Jordan. I believe I'm expected here. Jordan? I'm sorry I was delayed. I hope you received my wire. 